One thing we all hate is organising files, scans, metadata and films, but it's important. So here's how I do it. Organising your photos and data is super important so you don't end up in the digital equivalent of a hoarder's house. I've talked about scanning and editing in a past video which I'll link down below. So to start off, getting good metadata starts with setting the camera up correctly. And this basically means setting the time. So when I get to a new location, I always set the time and time zone on all my cameras to match my phone's time. Now by new location means when I'm traveling and I arrive in another country or a time zone. So on the digital cameras, this is easy, just set it in the menu. But on film bodies like the F6, there is no time zone option or I couldn't find it in the menus. So I just set the time itself to match the local time. I also make sure to clear the F6's memory and set the F6 to record detailed metadata internally because this is important later. Now, before I head out shooting, I set up an app on my phone called GPS Logger. It's an open source GPS Logger app on the F-Droid store that logs my location to a GPX file, which I can then later use to tag the photos with GPS data. Now, one thing I do is make sure to enable logging with the time zone so I don't have to set the offset manually later. This app also uploads the GPX files to my Google Drive automatically every day, as well as saving locally on the phone. And I have never forgotten to start the logging system ever. Not once has it happened. Then I shoot as normal over the trip. And when I finish a roll of film, I number my shot films and label them with what camera I used so I know what order I shot them in, as I need to track that for when I get to developing and sorting the films when I get back. To back up my digital photos and videos when traveling, I use small SSDs like this very nice Crucial X9 4 terabyte. It's fast and has high capacity for lots of high megapixel photos and some insane 8K video when I shoot that. I back up the files every night to folders called day one, day two, etc making sure to transfer all the files and double check everything. Then the day's backup is also backed up to a second SSD like this four terabyte NVMe drive in an enclosure because with data, one copy is none, two is one. I also keep one of these SSDs on me at all times and the other stays behind in the hotel. So if I lose my bag or it's lost for me, I still have all my data. And then I enjoy my trip until it's time to go and cry myself to sleep on the plane home knowing it's over. Once I get home and recover with a big dirty breakfast roll from the local deli, I start organizing my photos. So before I copy the files to my machine, I make a new project folder from a template and I name it starting with the date. Now I use the year month day format for all my dates as it alphabetizes nicely. Day month year doesn't alphabetize correctly and if you're using month day year, it's just stupid. Now in the project folder, I have a digital photos folder and a separate folder for scans. You can also see the numbering system I use to order the folders in the way I want. Now the reason I use folders like this instead of just dumping all the photos into a single folder is so that I can switch software easily if needed and all my files are organized independent of software. So I'm not beholden to the Lightroom catalog if I need to switch software in the future. So for my digital files, I just dump all the photos into the raw digital folder and import the pictures into Lightroom. Now in Lightroom, I actually have the sidecar XML file settings enabled. Now this means that the metadata will be added to the sidecar file, which other software can read. So if I ever do need to switch, I'm not once again beholden to the Lightroom catalog. Also at this point, I copy the GPX files to my GPX folder and using the map module in Lightroom, I tag all the photos with the GPS data. Now this only works if the clocks on your phone and camera are in sync, but sometimes the GPX files can be a bit off with time zone issues. So you can set an offset if you need to in Lightroom before you tag the photos. Obviously you don't need to do this if you have a GPS model hooked up to the camera or maybe one in the camera itself. Now, if you're using a Nikon camera, you can use the SnapBridge app, but I found it to be a bit wonky and unreliable. But the main reason I don't use it is that it won't work with the film scans later. Also, there's no way to back up the location data from SnapBridge that I can find. So having my own backup of the GPX files is very nice. Then with all the metadata set, I can just start editing and culling and working with my digital photos as normal and then realizing I've took a bunch of crap photos and they all have to be deleted anyway. Now, for my film rolls, the first thing I actually do is add a twin check sticker to the film to match the order of the rolls I shot. 
The number on the sticker doesn't matter, but the order does. Now, I always stick the sticker to the emulsion side at the start of the film, so this marks the start of the roll and the emulsion side when I'm scanning. Then I develop the film normally, and I make sure to scan the twin check sticker and all of the frames on the film without skipping any. This is very important when it comes to setting extra metadata later. Then I take these raw scans and using NX Studio, I turn off the sharpening and I set the camera profile to flat. I then export the images to a TIFF. I found that this gives a really nice scan to work from and removes any issues I have with Lightroom's raw processing. Uh, with the Z8 in particular having some weird noise issues and bad demosaicing problems when dealing with film grain. I found it kind of enhances the noise a little bit too much at times in some pictures. Now the scans from each roll of film are actually exported into separate folders inside my raw scans folder. Now here comes the interesting part. For cameras that support it like the F6, I use a tool called the Meta35 to extract the metadata from the F6. And because I know which order I shot the films in, I can use the software to add this metadata to the scans. This includes information like the camera, lens, aperture, shutter speed, but most importantly, the exact time the photo was taken. And then with this correct time, the scans will appear in the right order in Lightroom when I import them and export the images. But it also allows me to add the geotagging information to the scans as well using the GPX files. Then once they're geotagged, I can then add the Negative Lab Pro metadata for the film stock, shot at ISO, developing and scanning methods, as well as the camera used for the roll. And once all this is done, I do my normal editing, inversion with Negative Lab Pro and so on and so forth. Now for cases when I don't have the metadata on the camera, I group the scans and using my digital photos, I'll set a rough time for each of the film scans. So I might set all of the shots of a certain temple to 5 p.m. when I was there from four to six in the evening. I do this so the images appear in roughly the right place in the timeline and they're not all at the end of the folder or at the start. After I've imported everything and I make sure all the scans are good and I'm able to edit these pictures, I'll then take all the film rolls which I've stored in a Ziploc bag, keep the dust off, and I'll cut the rolls down to fit in my filing sheets. Now I use the clear plastic ad hoc sheets with these seven rows of six shots as I hold a whole roll of 36 exposures. I then add a label to the sheets with the date, roll number, and basic information, and then I'll store it in an ad hoc storage box. Now, once I've edited all my pictures and they're ready to go, I have to export them. Now, before I export my images, I've actually set up multiple export options, but one setting they all have in common is to rename the files to add the year, month, day, and the time to the start of the file name. This keeps the order of the photos when they're sorted by name, and it also means other things like Google Photos will actually keep the photos in order. So once I have my photos edited and flagged for export, I export all images three times. Now every image gets exported as a compressed DNG format to preserve any adjustments I made if I lose my Lightroom catalog in the future so I have a properly edited version. Then when it comes to film scans, they are all exported as high quality full res JPEGs with the Negative Lab Pro export option as it adds some nice metadata to the images and again I export them as a smaller version for Instagram. Now when I'm exporting for social media and Instagram, I use the resize option with 1080p on the short edge for Instagram posts. And then as for the digital shots, they're exported in the same two sizes, but I just use the normal JPEG export tools in Lightroom. Once that is done, I select the images for Instagram and I copy them to my phone so that I can forget to post them for a few months at a time. Once the kind of project is finished or all the images are edited, I cull a lot of the images I didn't edit out, but I do keep some of them just in case I might need them later. I generally cull out the ones out of a burst that I'm not going to use. Once I've culled all the images, I copy the entire project folder to my NAS and to a cold store backup drive. Really important photos are saved to a third drive, which I store offsite in a family member's house as well. Now, one thing I'd love to have in the future for backup is an LTO tape drive system for long-term and off-site backup, but those drives are really expensive. So maybe I'll find a used one cheap sometime, but I'd love to get a nice LTO8 tape drive. And that is how I manage my photos. It's not a perfect system, but it works really well for me for film and digital. And that's really it for this video. See you next time.